Hey everyone, and welcome to part one of the new C Sharp RPG series. Now, there's a lot of people that have told me in the past that they would rather see C Sharp videos and tutorials and whatnot. And since then, I've been doing nothing but C Sharp for about the past six months. And it's not too much different from JavaScript. There's a couple of things that are done differently. And I discussed that all in the latest update video, if you guys haven't seen that already. So pretty much I'm just starting a new series. I'm still going to do the uh, Pokemon series in JavaScript, but I decided to start on a brand new series for people who want to learn about C Sharp. So I'm pretty much going to be going through and doing a C Sharp series on just RPG mechanics and different stuff like that, spawn systems, enemy AI, group systems, um, all kinds of different stuff. Uh, yeah, just like brand new attack systems, respawning, um, anything that you guys want to suggest that you want to see in this tutorial series, let me know, and I can cover that in the future. Because I'm going to break this up pretty much how I how I did for my original tutorial series, but just break them into parts. Um, so some of the tutorials are going to probably take a couple of parts to cover, and I'm going to try my best to go over the code and explain everything properly. Now with this, I'm just going to be using pretty much the JavaScript uh, camera movement from my very first tutorial which I went back and I actually converted it all to C sharp it didn't take too long but yeah there's not going to be too much to talk about there but people who are new to programming new to unity uh, maybe new to C sharp and want to start something in C sharp you can follow along here and I'm just going to show you guys how to set this all up now we are going to be adding a bit more I took out some of the code that I had before for um, some of like the animations um, the different angles that you can walk on, like strafing and stuff like that. So right now it's pretty much the bare bones of the script. But I'll go back and I'll add my previous code that I did have in here and fix it up eventually. So pretty much we just have the user camera and the user movement. Now both these are working together to calculate the different angles and whatnot for when you want to switch directions and face a different way. And I also went through and coded um, a different thing in here for, um, for actually being able to scroll all the way in so you're in first person pretty much and you can use the left or right mouse button to rotate around and when you zoom out you'll be facing that direction and whatnot. And I also did a couple of other things with the, um, with the gravity and the ground movement so you stick to the ground because I know with the previous uh, script when you actually walk down a hill you would kind of jitter and bounce uh, along the train as you're going down so I fixed all that and yeah you guys can just mess around with this and I also uh, changed up the angle too so maybe you don't want your player to walk up a mountain or any object really if it was a 3d model or a terrain object if it's at a certain angle you're not going to be able to walk up it and I made it so I believe I disabled jumping if the angle is off. I might have taken out that piece of code, but I guess we could test it in the future. But yeah, that's pretty much the new stuff that I added to these scripts. I just changed up a couple of different things for C Sharp, but it's relatively somewhat similar with some improvements. So it's definitely better than the previous script. So what we're going to do is go to game object. You create a cube. Most people use a capsule for this stuff. I'm just going to do 5 by 10 by 5. We can actually probably adjust this for now just to 5. We can change that later. Um, but yeah, so for our capsule, we're just going to rename this player. And you're going to want to put a component and a character controller. And this will work with our... Um, with our other script because it needs a character controller it's just a built-in unity physics thing so yeah so what we'll do is we'll attach the user movement to this and you can adjust all these settings jump speed gravity um, so like how long you're after you jump you stay in the air how hard gravity is pushing you back down and all that uh, the different run speeds and the reason why I had three here is because um, Previously, I had an input where I could change the speed and I wanted to be able to revert back to the previous speed without messing up anything. So this is just 
kind of here. We'll go over that in the future, how to do like sprinting while holding shift and stuff like that to adjust these settings. So we got that all set up. We got our player names. We can go to our main camera and attach this. And now we're going to want our target player. And we also have a user model down here. I believe I was using that for something else, but we'll just put it there. I'll check it out later and see if that was for anything else. But anyways, um, go down here to our player, attach our camera. We don't have to worry about the controller for the user movements because we're just referencing it from the character controller that's attached to the player, and we just call that at the start. So that'll apply it automatically, so you don't have to set anything there. And that's pretty much all you have to do to get this to work. Um, we do have to change a couple of these settings. So height, we'll set to 5 since it's set to 5 already. Distance, um, we'll set to 100. Offset from wall. So this is if the camera is colliding with a physics object, how far off of the wall you want to be. The lower it is, it's probably going to end up clipping through that surface. So this doesn't always work at certain angles, like doorways and stuff. Sometimes it does clip through, but yeah, we'll just set that to five as well. Max distance, the max distance you want your camera to be at. Min distance, that's fine. You can set it for whatever you want there. Uh, X and Y speed for the camera when you're turning the camera. All this, um, this is for the actual angle. So when we're looking up at the sky or looking um, looking down, it locks at a certain angle so it doesn't completely uh, roll around and do like a 360 degree thing. Uh, zoom dampening, how fast do you actually want your, um, your camera to zoom in? Um, so it's kind of like a slight delay of when it's zooming in. And yeah, that's pretty much all you need to set up for that. So we'll just jump into gameplay real quick and I'll show you guys. As you see, the camera does collide with the floor and slowly move towards the character. I can use my WASD to move around like this. Um, with left click, I can rotate around the object without moving the object. I guess we can't really see that with the capsule since all the faces are the same, but if I end up replacing this with just a temporary character model, you guys will be able to see that. And then if I hold down right, um, it'll rotate the player in that direction while it's facing that way as well. So yeah, this pretty much works like a MMO movement and camera system. I'm sure other single player RPGs possibly work like this too. But yeah. Just getting this all set up for new people or people who haven't really followed my JavaScript tutorial series or anything like that, but we'll end up getting into more advanced stuff and whatnot. So if you guys have any questions about these scripts, they're kind of long, so I didn't want to go over all of them, and I've already gone over them somewhat in the past. So if you guys have any questions or anything like that, let me know. And from here on out, we are just going to be covering other RPG things, like I talked about, spawning systems and whatnot. Different RPG stats, how to calculate those stats when you're dealing with different monsters that you're attacking. Set up the whole attack system and all the basics that you need to create your own RPG game.